How's it going, everybody? And thank you for joining us again for uh, the Continue the Conversation podcast, another episode. Here we are. I'm David Ray. I'm here with Pastor Mike Heyman. Pastor Mike, how's it going? Man, it's better with you all day with David Ray. Hey, and we have literally been together. Hanging out. Hanging out all day. Chopping it up. We, solving the world's problems. <laughs> One meeting at a time. <laughs> One meeting at a time. Hey, interesting fact. We had we had lunch this week. We did. Sat down. We did. And had a moment that I, I just didn't think was ever going to happen. thought you would never see. Never. Mm-hmm. We had a big old pizza together. It's huge. It's called the butcher. <laughs> the butcher. Bro, we loaded it with meat. <laughs> yes. It, it was delicious. You never thought. You thought I'd just eat like salads all yeah, the time. I man. know it. Salad, lean protein. <laughs> Here you are. Just get extra Parmesan. <laughs> yes. Bring me some. Some ranch. Bring the truffle fries. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all have root beer. <laughs> Everything imaginable. It was, it was awesome. But man, the church is in such a healthy place. I, I know That's we're great. in a great series mm, right now. Let's it. be that church. That church. Serve Timber happening, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. was coined in, in really a marketing strategy. That's it. By very own Pastor Johnny Green. All, yeah. For 12 years, he's been trying to get this name. He's been waiting. That's it. Baby Blue Eyes finally got it done. Yes. And here we are. <laughs> Red surf shirts, serving people. And we're so thankful for the church. So thankful for the people who serve so faithfully and for this environment too. And Mm -hmm. I know one thing that helps so much to get traction here is for people to like and to share this video. So Mm -hmm. as you enjoy this, man, share it with people. I know that helps those who are receiving it and also just getting the word out. But our whole mission in doing this, and we've been doing it for a moment now, Mm -hmm. is that we want to equip people with the word of God. That's right. And we believe as you learn God's word, Mm -hmm. you get it not just in your head, but you get it in your heart. heart. And you talk about that so much with getting scriptures in us Mm -hmm. that it really transforms the way we live Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Especially in the day and age that we live in now. Yes. You know, there is a famine in our nation and really in the world as it relates to the Word of God. Yeah. But as we feast on the Word, we're Amen. prepared for the battles, the challenges. That's good. So uh, hopefully this podcast can serve as another tool. Yes. You know, in the belt uh, of the believer. And I believe God's building some great things in the yes. house, man. He yes. really is. And thank you for, for leading us, for shepherding us, for teaching us. Man, you're always serving up some good meals, man. So Come thank on, you. Come on. Pizza, Pizza and the word. That's it, man. What a great combination, <laughs> <Yes>. man. <laughs> Not in that order. <laughs> no, fe- feast on the word yes. first. Yeah. Pizza later. <laughs> but hey, I'm I'm super excited about this focus on the book of Acts. Mm-hmm. You know, the book of Acts is just full of amazing stories. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take two podcasts this month, Mm -hmm. and we're going to focus on Peter Mm -hmm. in this one today, and then Paul in the one that we'll do in a couple of weeks. And it's just so amazing to see the Holy Spirit move. But, you know, in looking at Acts, you have to first start is is who wrote it. Mm -hmm. And Luke is the author. And Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, which I believe, is that 24 chapters? 24? Yep. 24 24. chapters. Mm -hmm. And then Acts is 28 chapters. Right. That's good math there. And he has done so much writing. Gospel of Luke talking about the life of Jesus, what took place in his ministry, and then looking at the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit moving, Mm -hmm. the gospel spreading. Mm -hmm. And here he is. He is a doctor. Right. He's not a disciple. Yep. He's a doctor. So you know he kept meticulous records. That's it. Historian. detailed. Yeah. Colossians even said he was a beloved doctor. Mm -hmm. So loved. People loved him. Mm -hmm. He was a companion of Paul. He also was, this is real important, he was also Gentile. Mm -hmm. And so the only Gentile author... Of the Bible. Wow. Of any of the books of the Bible, the one Gentile author is Luke. Mm -hmm. And he writes, Luke and Acts of the Apostles. And he writes it to this guy, this is a different name, Theophilus. Mm -hmm. And some people believe that that name was actually kind of like code, that didn't want his true identity to get out. And that name actually means lover of God. And Mm -hmm. he's detailing the accounts of what took place in the early church. Mm-hmm. And Luke, like you said, was so meticulous, so detailed. And I just encourage everybody as, as you're listening to this and also we're going through this series, it'd just be a great practice. I know a lot of us doing the one-year Bible, but to read the the Acts, the book of Acts as well, mm-hmm. and to learn what God is doing here. But one thing that's so neat, Pastor Mike, and I want you to share about this, is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Mm-hmm. is really kind of like 
the blueprint of the way the book is laid yeah. out. I know you were sharing that with me earlier. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about Acts chapter 1, mm-hmm. verse 8, mm-hmm. and how it shows us kind of the table of contents mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the book of Acts. Well, as, as, as Jesus promised his disciples, Acts 1, 8, he said, but you will receive power. And I, I love that. That word power in the Greek is dunamis. It's yes. the same word we get for dynamite. So this is a dynamic book. You know, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so, you know, you, you begin to see, you, you correlate, okay, this, this outpouring of God's Spirit would empower these disciples, um, but it wasn't something unto themselves. It was a power to be a witness. Right. And, um, and so that single verse kind of sets the, the entire book of Acts up, almost like the table of contents. Mm-hmm. You know, Acts chapters 1 and 2, they're, they're waiting for the promise. You know, they're waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They receive the, the outpouring of the Holy yes. Spirit. Uh, in Acts 3 and 7, then it says uh, the, the believers, or Acts chapter 3 through, through 7, seven. The, they, they begin to share their faith in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. So notice the progress in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, in chapters 8 and 9, then you see them taking their message to Judea and Samaria. Okay. And then chapters 10 through 28, then you see the Gentiles now being brought into this experience and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So it's really interesting to see that progression, how it starts where they are, and then almost like you throw a pebble, you know, into oh, the good. to the it to spreads. the waters, and you see, yeah, it starts yeah. to spread. Yeah. And so that's 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 a beautiful blueprint of uh, an amazing book. Mm. Isn't that cool too? How anything that's of God, it always grows. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you cannot just try to bury the message of the gospel, the things of the kingdom, but instead there's just exponential growth that's happening. And it's it's cool to see that even in our own church. Just mm-hmm. so many people coming, so many people who are hungry for God's word. Mm-hmm. And as these people were spreading the gospel, mm-hmm. whether that was in Jerusalem or Judea or the furthest most parts of mm-hmm. the known world at the time, mm-hmm. it was just like wildfire. Yeah. Well, and I think that's a great principle too for us. You know, we we pray for revival in our city. You know, we pray for revival at our school campuses. Right. You know, you pray for revival in your family. Well, how how do you reach those different areas? It mm-hmm. has got to start in that's us. That's it. Yep. You know, and so that passion and that power, that outpouring of God's spirit within us, and then there's kind of that domino, that trickle effect. Yeah. And so that was the beautiful thing in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And then, you know, for 28 chapters, you see just an amazing arc of mm-hmm. God's presence among his people. Right. And the two primary players in the book of Acts are the Apostle Peter mm-hmm. and the Apostle Paul. You know, and so today we, we want to focus on Peter, right. and they're, they're, we're very familiar, I think, you know, the Gospels uh, do a fantastic job of really painting a picture of his personality, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I think a lot of people identify with him probably the most because yeah. the mistakes that he made are documented, yeah. you know, yeah. the, uh, he was impulsive, he right. was erratic, you know, he was emotional, he, he liked to speak before he would think, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, okay, I can identify. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, and, and yet G- Jesus chose him to yeah. be on the team. Maybe there's hope for me. There's hope, you baby. Know? That's and, so good. Uh, yeah. I, I love that. And so you, you see in chapter two, really, and that's where I want us to drill in first. Chapter mm-hmm. two, the day of Pentecost mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit falling. And you you talk through Acts chapter one, verse eight in the blueprint, but talk to us about the significance of Acts chapter two, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit falling and and Peter's involvement mm. on that day. Mm-hmm. Well, so if you want to look at this through the lens of, of Peter, you know, I, you almost want to rewind to uh, Matthew 16, where, where where Jesus changed Peter's name. Okay, it was originally yeah. Simon. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you know, Simon means to listen or to hear. Peter means rock. And you know, Jesus said, from now on, your name is Peter. Rock and upon this rock I will build my church, and so it's almost like a commissioning. You know, Peter was the original leader of this church movement. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the only one, right? But he was the the original one, and so you know, you, you think about that commissioning. I, I wonder what Peter's thoughts were in that moment, and then we read about all the mistakes that he made leading up to the cross. You know, and then you're you're kind of you know post resurrection. 
you know, Peter's there with 120 in that upper room, and they're waiting for the promise. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you said earlier that the book of Acts, and it's referred to as the Acts of the Apostles, mm-hmm. but really it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You know, he is the source, that Acts 1.8, he is the source of that power by which all the disciples and all those who were gathered there that day begin to move in. And so Acts chapter 2, I think we really, we see this as the birth of the New Testament church. Yes. When Jesus said in Matthew 16, upon this rock, I will build my church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I wonder what the disciples thought, you know, because they didn't really have necessarily church as we would know it. Right. You know, and then years later, here you you have this this moment. You know, 120 are gathered in an upper room, and they're 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 doing what Jesus said. They're waiting. They're praying. They're in unity. And the Bible says something significant happened. Yes, you know, and and this is this is what we know as the Holy Spirit being poured out upon. The, and I've been to the upper room when we went to Israel back in 2017. Man, I wanted cool. to go to the upper room and see what this, uh, you know, really what cool. scholars believe that was the environment yeah. in which it took place. That's awesome. And uh, you know, you you think about it. Post, how, how big was it? You know, it's actually larger than what I had imagined. You know, okay. I kind of thought of kind of a, a small area because there was a lot of uncertainty. A lot of fear, you know, the church was undergoing persecution after Jesus had been crucified. And so a lot of the followers are thinking, hey, are we next? You Mm -hmm. know, even the disciples met behind closed doors that were locked. Right. This was a a large gathering, you know, spacious. And, um, you know, it was a prayer meeting like like none other. Right. You know, uh, and they didn't necessarily know what to expect. It wasn't like Jesus, you know, detailed exactly what would happen. Yep. You know, and so they're praying and... You know, it, it's really interesting because God created the church in this moment, almost like if you want to go back to Genesis when God created Adam in the garden. Mm. You know, from the dust of the earth, mm-hmm. Adam was made. And he has this physical body, but he's deactivated until the Lord breath. breathed oh, his great. breath yeah. into him. And the Bible says Adam became a living being. Yes. And almost, you know, the church was starting to formulate you. You have this exterior, but then the breath of God on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind. wind. Yes. And uh, in fact, the New Testament word for spirit is the word pneuma, uh, which means breath or air for breathing. And it's almost as if, if God went, oh, yeah. And then, Man, oh, into that's a great connection. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so G- connecting they, Genesis. Yeah, d- Genesis. The creation to this of moment. man to now, like the the spirit of God being breathed in the mm-hmm. pneuma mm-hmm. coming mm-hmm. into mankind. Emmanuel is God with us. That's Jesus. But now God was in them. That's great. through the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, just on the heels of that, you think about the Old Testament. Because this is a significant moment that's taking place in Acts chapter 2. In the Mm -hmm. Old Testament, you would see the Holy Spirit move, and he was active, and he would come upon somebody. Mm -hmm. But then this kind of changes the game big Mm -hmm. time for us, Mm -hmm. not just for the first century believer, Mm -hmm. but also for us today, Mm -hmm. 2,000 plus years later, Mm -hmm. that now the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us, Mm -hmm. and how significant and important that is to be able to fulfill the calling that God and has. And the other thing, too, you know, so in the Old Testament, you would see the Spirit of God come up on certain people for mm-hmm. a specific assignment. It's almost like it's know? limited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, kind of a foretaste, a foreshadow of what was to come. A little, on little the, appetizer. There you go. A little truffle fry. The pizza's coming. <laughs> um, but, a little cheese bread. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, but But on the day of Pentecost, what's cool is now we see the Holy Spirit isn't just for a certain person for a specific yes. assignment, but it's for everyone. That's so good. Because he was poured out upon. I, I, that 120, I think if you go back and you read in Acts chapter 2 and you count the different nationalities that are represented, there are 17, I believe, close to 17 different nationalities that are spoken of in Acts chapter 2. So as the Spirit of God was poured out on the 120, the Bible said they began to speak in tongues and what was being uttered was understood by Mm. those around them. All the different nationalities that were represented, they heard the glory of God spoken in their own language. Yes. So almost like a distinction between a prayer language, which we believe that God Mm -hmm. can give people prayer languages, Mm -hmm. but this tongue was for the purpose of those who were foreigners, in a sense, they were Jewish, but Mm -hmm. they were from different areas, 
that they could understand what was being spoken in their tongue right mm-hmm. then. Because this was, uh, this is known as the Day of Pentecost, and this was a, a feast that was celebrated by the Jewish people seven weeks after the, you know, the crucifixion of Jesus, um, you know, yeah. the, the resurrection, the f- festival of harvest, mm-hmm. you know, that in, in Old Testament days, it recognized the giving of the law. When Moses came yes. down from the mountain yes. and he gave the law to God's people, Exodus there 20. was, yeah, Exodus 20, there was thunder, there was lightning, lightning, man, there was an earthquake, the mountain shook, and on the day of Pentecost now, mm. there was this shaking, yes. you know, this this thunderous sound, this wind coming. So you see the Old Testament, New Testament coming together, yeah. and um, it's almost as if, you know, of course, Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, but after Jesus was resurrected and went to heaven... He he gave us, he said, greater things than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Right. And he had told him, he said, you've been baptized with water, but I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, and even John the Baptist made reference mm-hmm. that he, he had a certain ceiling, but what Jesus was going to do, and the only way to have the Holy Spirit is to know Jesus. That's it. <laughs> Jesus is the baptizer. That's it. Of the Holy Spirit. We've baptized a lot of people in water, but there's only one person who can baptize someone with the Holy Ghost, That's and that right. is Jesus. That's and right. So you see this. I want to. I want to just stay in this area for a moment, okay. because how hard? I just thought about this. You're talking. How hard would it have been to wait? You know, here they are waiting. Mm-hmm. They had so much momentum. You know, Jesus is alive. Seems like, hey, go charge the hill. I'm alive. Mm-hmm. But he knew it was so important for them to wait. Mm-hmm. And I bet there's probably people right now even in waiting seasons, yep. they're, they're waiting for God. feel like they have a word from God, but it hasn't come to pass. But what were they doing? You, you mentioned it earlier, just the importance of prayer, mm-hmm. seeking God's face, but just being faithful and mm-hmm. understanding that there mm-hmm. is power in waiting. Yeah, Any thoughts? Sure. Well, I, first thought is waiting time is not wasted time. You know, God's clock operates very different than ours. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of times we'll measure things in minutes and moments, and he's measuring things in months and years, yeah. you know. There was a preparation, you know, that, that needed to take place. And, and so for those that are watching this podcast and maybe they are in a waiting season, I would say, please, don't, don't get discouraged. Don't stop what you're doing. Yeah. They were simply doing the last thing Jesus told them to do. Yep. Instead of getting impatient, anxious, trying to create the own, create your own moment or opportunity— those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, their strength. strength. They'll yeah. mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. If the if the 120 tried to get out ahead of God and, and do this thing called church in their own strength, it wouldn't have lasted for 2,000 That's years. That's good. Now, now, see, we are in the wake 2,000 years later of that moment because they waited on the Lord, and it was the right timing. Yes. And it was unmistakable that that was not humanly engineered. Right. You know, there, uh, there was some confusion, you know, when people, they heard all this, you know, conversation in their own language, sp- speaking the mysteries and the glories of God. They're saying, man, these guys are drunk. <laughs> and Peter's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's early in the morning. It's Way too, too early for that. It's too early for that. <laughs> 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 this was three o'clock, maybe. But. <laughs> yeah, or this is New Orleans down on yeah. Bourbon Street. <laughs> Give us till twelve at least. <laughs> he said, "But this is that which was prophesied by Joel in yes. Joel chapter two. Oh, yeah. He said, "In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh." Mm-hmm. And that's the thing: the Holy Spirit's for everybody. That's it. It's not for a select elite group of people. This is not the green berets of Christianity. Mm-hmm. This is for ordinary, everyday people like us mm-hmm. who need the power of the Holy Spirit to raise our children. Yes. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to to do marriage well. That's we it. need the power of the Holy Spirit on our jobs, in our relationships. Man, we cannot be mm. like Jesus without the help That's of the good. Holy Ghost. That's, That's why He gives us the Holy Spirit. So many times people make this about tongues. Mm-hmm. You know, they make it okay. Do you believe in speaking in tongues? Oh, you oh you do. Oh, you don't. And mm-hmm. we divide and label. We use we use tongues to divide and label. When Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit, and tongues were meant to unite. Yep. 
and empower. Mm-hmm. This is where the church was united and empowered. And so, you know, we have to keep those things in mind. That's it good. is interesting, you know, if you do compare this, you go back to Genesis 11 and, uh, you know, the, the Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there was one language at the time. Right. They were all working together and they were building this tower for their own glory. And yes. God looked down from heaven and said, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And so he scattered the people by dividing their languages. Yes. So on the day of Pentecost, you see a reversal of that. What the Tower of Babel scattered, the day of Pentecost gathered. Oh, come on. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Come on, somebody. Right here, hey, man. Right touch down. a teammate, somebody. <laughs> so, you know, uh, there is something to be said about a church that's unified and empowered through the Holy Spirit. And, and David, that's our heart right. for HPC. Right. You know, man, uh, we are a a very diverse group of people. We have a lot of different understandings and experiences, Mm -hmm. but we are united in Christ, and I pray that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can sustain as a church in this day and age. Well, you you know, with that, they were praying. They were seeking God. I just thought how prayer really positions us Mm. for God to do what He desires to do. Amen. When I'm operating my flesh, I'm trying to force something to happen. Hey, God, move now. Do this. I'm stepping out and getting ahead of God. But when I pray, there is a peace that happens, yes. and there is a positioning that happens, mm, that his good. timing is always perfect. That's good. Because what he wants for us and what he wants for the church, what he wants for his followers, is far greater than what we even want for ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, Because it is, like you said, it's not the Tower of Babel. This is about man. Mm-hmm. This is all about God's glory. Mm-hmm. But staying here, Peter had a pretty big role in this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the fact that it was the Apostle Peter to step up in that moment, and I believe preach one of the greatest sermons ever recorded in the New Testament. Of course, you know, the words of Jesus are the the best, (laughs) but if you look at the impact of this one message, 3,000 people get saved. Without a microphone, without keys in the back, Yeah, no. Sid and Doug weren't singing. They didn't have uh, Kids District, um, and didn't have any parking attendants, man. There was no cafe. Yeah. <laughs> the people didn't have their coffee. It was just straight up straight the word. word. Just and word. They, they were cut to Come the on. heart. Yes. What must we do to the be power saved? Of the word. And, you know, Dave, I think here's what, one of the things I love about it, is that it had to be Peter to preach this message. Yes. That God would choose Peter in the aftermath mm-hmm. of the denial. I mean, right. you think about the last time, the, as Jesus is on his way to the cross, in Luke 22, whenever Peter denied Christ for the third time, the Bible says he turned and he looked at Jesus. Mm. Man, he had locked eyes with right. Jesus. So the grief, the scripture says that he wept bitterly. I think it was intentional that the Lord chose Peter to be the preacher on this day. Isn't that powerful? And, and until you know what it's like to fail mm-hmm. completely and still be loved by God. Yes. And I, I, I say that, I hope somebody's listening today, yep. and they feel hope in their heart that, wait a second, God can use even Absolutely. me, even after what I've done. You know, the regret, the guilt, the shame, the, oh, you, you mean, Lord, you want to use me? Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. And Peter's an example. Hey, he's... That rock. Yes. Look, Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In fact, I'm going to use you in spite of your mess up. That's so good. Well, isn't that just like Jesus to pour out his grace, mm. the redemptive story? Redeem. Hey, you messed up 50 days ago, and here you are 50 days later, 3,000 people getting saved and baptized. Baptized. So, Holy Spirit falls, major outpouring. And you just see from this point on, the book of Acts, just acceleration. It does. It's just growth. Mm. People being reached. Mm. Man, miracles happening. Mm. Healings taking place. The gospel. And like you said, it's the Spirit and it's the Word of God. Spirit mm-hmm. and the Word of God and community. Mm. But let's fast forward a little bit. Okay. We, we, I feel like we, we dug around the tree really good there with Acts chapter 2. It's fantastic. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Okay. So this is a very pivotal turning point, Mm -hmm. because here in this text, I want you to talk to us about the significance of Cornelius Mm -hmm. and this vision and Peter and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what happens in Acts chapter 10 that really segues into the rest of the book. So can can I read some verses out of that? The Bible says it better than I could. I can't give commentary as well as what the scripture says itself. Acts 10 verse 1, in Caesarea, 
there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius. Now, this is important. He was Roman. He was Gentile. He wasn't Jewish. He was Gentile. And he was a, a Roman army officer, so he's a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a captain of the Italian regiment. Bible says in verse 2, he was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor, and he prayed regularly to God. Mm. There's a common theme here. Yep. Uh, one afternoon, about 3 o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. The angel replied, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. You know, it, it is interesting how this moment was birthed in prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, on the day of Pentecost, at this time, you know, the, the movement was primarily centered on the Jewish people. They mm -hmm. were God's chosen. Salvation comes through the Jews. This we see as a turning point in the narrative because now the message of hope is coming to the Gentiles through this man, Cornelius. Yeah. And in prayer, he gets a vision. And I want you to know that if you're going to get a revelation, it's got to come through seeking God. Right. You know, it can't be, you know, I heard this or I, you know, uh, you know, you grab something off the Internet or you, you, you can make a whole lot of things up right. and say, I've heard from God. If you truly want a revelation, you're going to be seeking the Lord. That's it. And he points him to Simon Peter. Yep. You know, and so here, here we see now. And then so the scripture goes on to tell us that Simon Peter, Peter's praying one afternoon and he has a vision. So again, vision and revelation come through prayer. And God shows Peter this vision of this sheet, and it's filled with all kinds of animals. Mm -hmm. And according to Jewish laws and customs, they were unclean animals. Mm -hmm. And in the vision, God tells Peter, hey, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter's <laughs> like, said, uh -uh. no, 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 I've never eaten anything unclean right. in my life. I've been very strict to adhere to our Jewish laws. And the Lord told him, don't say, don't call unclean something that I have cleansed. You can, sign, you can start to see the shifting in Peter's understanding. Yes. God was wanting Peter to open up his eyes and say, this message of salvation is not just for the Jews, but it's for the Gentiles oh, too. That's good. That's so good. And to think back, like what you mentioned about Cornelius, this leader, that here he is, he's a Roman, he's a Gentile, but he has a relationship with Yahweh. Mm. It says he's God-fearing, the mm -hmm. scripture you read, and his whole household. Mm -hmm. So here he has had an encounter with the Lord. He is somebody's witness to him, because yep. this is a polytheistic culture and society, man. They worshiped all kinds of false deities during the time of you know evil emperors who are persecuting people, and here he is. He's surrendered his life to God, but that wasn't it. It wasn't mm. the end, because he didn't know Jesus yet. Mm. And the Holy Spirit gives him this vision. He goes to, to Peter, and then Peter starts to... He witnesses to him, mm -hmm. and he gets saved. He has an encounter with Christ, and his life mm -hmm. is changed, and everything changes at this point. Mm -hmm. It's like the salvation story of what was lost in the garden, that God made his covenant with his people, that Abraham was the father of faith, mm -hmm. that you see the, the kingdom of Israel coming together. They, they were attacked by the Assyrians, the Babylonians. You see all these things take place, and then Jesus comes to the scene, and he doesn't just go after Israel. He does, but then he uses the Holy Spirit to start reaching the Gentiles mm. and the rest of the world. Mm. Well, I, I've heard it say, said before that big doors swing on small hinges. And this was one of those small hinges that threw the door of salvation wide open to all of us. Yes. And when I read this, I'm just so grateful that the Lord would create a place for somebody like me. That's right. You know, of course, the Jews were God's chosen people, but it was through those chosen people that salvation would come to the world. Grafted in. Gra grafted in. We were the wild, wild vine <laughs> that was grafted it's in. It's not the man. most uh, endearing term, but hey, Made no I'd sense, rather be a, a wild vine than just a dead vine. That's it, well, man. That, that life is flowing through us, man. That God would do something unnatural. That's it. You know, to plug us into this this realm of faith and and life. And so salvation history really hinges. This is an important moment, mm -hmm. you know, for both Cornelius and his family, but also for for the apostle Peter. 
um, because as from this moment now, then Peter would really initiate getting the gospel to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. you know, because for, for so long, I mean, Gentiles were pagans, they were enemies, you know, they were unclean, you didn't don't associate, associate with, with them, them. Don't eat with them. That's right. And and that's why the people had a problem with Jesus, because he was, you know, eating and drinking with, you know, sinners, yep. and, yep. you know, he kind of broke some of those rules. That was a precursor yep. to now what this moment would mm. create for all of us. That's so good. I, and I just think, too, Pastor Mike, about you know, our approach to the lost, our approach to people who don't come to church, who think mm -hmm. differently than us, that maybe have different political ideas than us, that mm -hmm. view the world differently than us. I'm thankful that Peter did not shut the door on what God was wanting to do. Because here's mm -hmm. the thing, he would have found somebody else. Mm -hmm. God's going to do what he wants to do. That's right. But Peter was filled with the Spirit enough to say, hey, the Lord is moving. I need to minister to this guy. Mm -hmm. I need to... And it's just like this spark, man. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, you, you start seeing people the way God sees them, mm -hmm. you start loving people the way God loves them, mm -hmm. then there's a contagiousness mm -hmm. about the gospel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trying to memorize this scripture, so hopefully I get it right. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible says that the gospel is not, the kingdom of God is just not about a bunch of talk, but it is about living by God's power. Yeah. And I thought, man, how awesome is that, that there is a message, but people need to sense the power of God in us, the love of Jesus in us, the compassion, mm -hmm. the grace that draws them in, and thank God Peter got it. What mm -hmm. a redemptive story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? That's great. Well, you know, w when you feel like your life has been so blessed, don't build a higher fence, build a longer table. That's good. And so Peter's life was incredibly blessed, changed by Jesus. And yet, you know, if we're not careful, we will, in our minds, create a small reality for what God can do. We'll write people off. Mm -hmm. We'll say, man, that person just doesn't have a chance. Or, you know, I love when I hear stories of people say, you know, I, I was in church Sunday and I saw somebody I used to run around with back yes. in the old days, and I'd go to them and say, yes. what in the world are you doing? I never thought I'd <laughs> see say, you what here. what are you doing here? Yeah, I, say, I never thought I'd see you here either. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes we quit on people when God says, wait a second. Right. Uh, be, just as the 120 had to wait mm -hmm. in the upper room, you got to be patient with what God is doing That's with a good people. Word. That's a good word. You know, because yeah. as Peter sits down with Cornelius and his family, then they're all like, okay, I had this vision, you had this vision, <laughs> the Lord told me to send for you, now you're here, okay, what do we do? So Peter starts talking, and the Bible says as he's talking, Boom. man, the Holy Spirit fell yes. on everybody yes. in the room. And so, you know, Cornelius, his entire house, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They were praising God. And it was that outward manifestation that convinced Peter, wait a second. I remember what happened to me on the day of Pentecost right. in Jerusalem. Now, here I am in Caesarea with this Gentile. They're speaking in... Do you mean to tell me the Holy Spirit is for everyone? <laughs> that's right. You better believe that's it. That's so good. Well, I, I think that's an appropriate way for us to close out this episode. Hmm. And really, our next one that will be released in a couple weeks that we'll be doing soon is, is going to pick up on this story. Hmm. The narrative of the gospel spreading to the Gentiles through a man named... Paul. Come on. Oh, Paul. The colossal <laughs> apostle. <laughs> I like yes. Paul. It's going to be good. And so I, I appreciate our time together. I do, I do love what you said just as far as, hey, let's love people. Let's believe God that he can save anybody. Mm -hmm. Man, his grace is mm -hmm. not limited. Let's not dumb down his grace, dumb down our expectations of what God wants to do. When the Holy Spirit's moving, anything is possible. That's right. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Like we said at the beginning, like and share this if this is helpful to you. We love you and we'll see you back soon.